One of the most interesting features of Islam in the world today is that Muslims seem to get all of their information about Islam and Christianity from popular Muslim speakers. But the popular Muslim speakers tend to be compulsive liars. The result is that the average Muslim rarely knows anything about Islam beyond basic Muslim practices, and he knows even less about Christianity. The really sad part, though, is that these horribly misinformed Muslims will criticize a Christian based on their own ignorance of both Islam and Christianity. Let me give you an example. Almost two years ago, I posted a video titled, A Question No Muslim Can Answer, Prove Me Wrong. In the video, which has over 1.6 million views, I challenge Muslims to show me a single clear verse in the Quran that says the gospel was corrupted. At first, Muslims tried to answer, but they eventually gave up, and now they just changed the subject. For instance, Aziz writes, Can you please reinterpret of your miracle of having so many books where we just have one? Why do you follow New Testament over Old Testament? Isn't that a miracle of reinterpretation? So, according to our new friend Aziz, in Islam, there is only one book. But Christians have so many books. He only mentions two, the Old Testament and the New Testament. He asks why we would follow the New Testament instead of the Old Testament. And he says, isn't that a miracle of reinterpretation? The only miracle I see here is how Muslims still trust their sheikhs and imams when their sheikhs and imams caused them to be so incredibly ignorant, not only of Christianity, but also of Islam. All right, Aziz, since your sheikhs and imams have failed you so miserably, let me teach you the basics of the books, according to Christianity and Islam. You mention the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament contains the revelations given to the children of Israel. God made a covenant with the children of Israel. A covenant is an agreement. God says, here's what I'm going to do for my part of the agreement, and here's what you're going to do for your part of the agreement. The people who entered into that covenant were the children of Israel, and the revelations given to them are in the Old Testament. But that's not the only covenant God made. God later made a new covenant with people who believe in Jesus. The revelations given to people who believe in Jesus for the new covenant are contained in the New Testament. So, why do Christians follow the New Testament? Because those are the revelations given to us for the covenant between us and God. Now, you think it's silly that, according to Christianity, God has revealed multiple books because he's made different covenants with different people at different times. You only have the Quran. Unfortunately, Aziz, you haven't read the Quran. How do I know? I know because according to the Quran, Allah has revealed multiple books. Consider a few verses that you've never read. Surah 3, verses 3 to 4. He, Allah, hath revealed unto thee, Muhammad, the scripture with truth, confirming that which was revealed before it, even as he revealed the Torah and the gospel aforetime for a guidance to mankind, and hath revealed the criterion of right and wrong. Lo, those who disbelieve the revelations of Allah, theirs will be a heavy doom. Allah is mighty, able to requite the wrong. Notice, Aziz, Allah mentions multiple books. Then he says, those who disbelieve in the revelations of Allah, theirs will be a heavy doom. But you only believe in one book, the Quran, when Allah says that he revealed multiple books. This means that your sheikhs and imams have gotten you into trouble with Allah because of the lies they told you. But Allah doesn't just mention the Torah and the gospel in the Quran. In Surah 4, verse 163, he says, We imparted unto David the Psalms. Interesting that Allah's preferred pronoun here is we. In Surah 87, verse 19, Allah refers to the books of Abraham and Moses. Assuming the Torah is the book of Moses, there's also the book of Abraham.
So, Allah has revealed numerous books according to the only book you say you believe in, a book which also condemns anyone who doesn't believe in all the books. Of course, if you ask your sheikhs and imams about these other books, they'll tell you that all of these other books, all the books except the Quran, have been lost or thoroughly corrupted. And so everyone now has to follow the Quran. This is what we call lying, Aziz. In the Quran, Allah commands different groups to judge by the revelations that have come to them. The Jews once went to Muhammad to settle a legal dispute. Allah responds in Surah 5, verse 43, How come they unto thee, unto Muhammad, for judgment, when they have the Torah, wherein Allah hath delivered judgment for them? Yet even after that they turn away. Such folk are not believers. Notice, Allah asks why Jews are coming to Muhammad when they already have the Torah, which contains Allah's judgments. According to Allah, the Jews don't need Muhammad because they already have the Torah. This makes no sense if the Torah has been corrupted. If the Torah has been corrupted, the Jews would obviously need Muhammad to give them an uncorrupted revelation. Just a few verses later, Allah says that Christians must judge not by the Quran, but by the Gospel. He says, let the people of the gospel judge by that which Allah hath revealed therein. Whoso judgeth not by that which Allah hath revealed, such are evil livers. Why would Allah tell Christians to judge by a corrupt book? Why wouldn't he tell us to judge by the Quran if the gospel has been corrupted? In Surah 5, verse 68, we read, Say, O people of the book, Ye have no ground to stand upon unless ye stand fast by the law, the gospel, and all the revelation that has come to you from your Lord. Why would Allah say that we have no ground to stand upon unless we stand upon corrupt books? What your sheikhs and imams tell you makes absolutely no sense, Aziz. They're telling you that Allah is a liar. Who's the liar, Aziz? Is Allah lying, or are your sheikhs and imams lying? Now, in light of what Allah says in the Quran, let's read your comment one more time, Aziz. Can you please reinterpret of your miracle of having so many books where we just have one? Why do you follow New Testament over Old Testament? Isn't that a miracle of reinterpretation? You'll recall, Aziz, that Allah says in the only book you believe in that he revealed multiple books. And he says that we have no ground to stand upon unless we stand upon multiple books. And he orders Christians to judge by the gospel, not by any other book. And yet you mock us for believing that God has revealed multiple books, and you mock us for following the book that was revealed to us for the covenant that God made with us. The Quran condemns you for everything you've said, Aziz. So, why have your sheikhs and imams filled your head with total nonsense? Well, it's actually pretty simple. When it comes to our book, there are only two possibilities. Either Christians have the inspired, preserved, authoritative Word of God, or we don't. If we have the inspired, preserved, authoritative Word of God, the Quran is false because the Quran contradicts our book on basic doctrines. If we don't have the inspired, preserved, authoritative Word of God, the Quran is still false, because the Quran affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of our book. So, if we have the Word of God, Islam is false. If we don't have the Word of God, Islam is false. Either way, Islam is false. Knowing what your book says about our book, is enough to destroy your entire religion. And that, Aziz, is why your sheikhs and imams lie to you. But just because they lie to you, doesn't mean you have to believe them. This is a part of religion, there's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah?